Ms. Johnson, you and Ms. Page are connected because you each have a child who has the same father. Yes. Would that be you? Yes. Okay. And it is your claim that the defendant came to the house. You live together? No. Well, as of now, yes. As of? Back <laughs> when the case happened, yeah, we did live together. And while you were living together, it is your claim that the defendant came over one evening, assaulted you, and vandalized your car. Yes. The defendant denies she was even in town on the night that she's alleging that this happened. And she has a counterclaim. She says that you've been harassing her. She believes that you somehow vandalized her car with some foreign object in her gas tank. She's got a counterclaim. Okay, when did this incident happen? On May 5th. Of this year? Yes. What time? It was about 12.30, between 12.30 a.m. and 1 a.m. So tell me what happened. Okay, Your Honor, on the night of May 5th, um, me and Gary were celebrating Cinco de Mayo. We had some margaritas and tacos, and then we were gonna call it a night around 12.30. Gary goes to bed, and his phone just starts to ring right before I lay down. And it's an unknown call constantly coming in. So eventually I answer, and it was a... How many times did it ring? Probably about five missed calls. Okay. And so, finally, I pick up, and it's Azuri on the other line, and she's like, uh, where's Gary? And I said... Now, do you know her? Had you met her before? Yes. How many times? We've known each other for over three years. So you knew her voice, or she identified exactly, herself? Exactly, yes. What did she say? She said, where's Gary? I said, he's asleep. She said, he's been at my house for three nights. And I said, well, that's impossible because he's been home. So she's like, well, where is he? I say, he's asleep. She said, wake him up. So then I wake Gary up and Gary's, I hand Gary the phone and he's like, this is a joke, just hang up. So right before I hang up, she says, open the door. Right before we opened the door, it was a knock maybe five seconds later. So Gary runs to the door and looks in the peephole and he can't make out who it is. She's like leaning on the door. So then I look in the peephole and I said, Gary, this is Azuri. And Gary's like, is it? So he looks back in the peephole and then I yell, we didn't open the door yet. I say, Zuri, why are you at my house at one in the morning? She's like, I need to speak to Gary. I said, okay. So then Gary's like, well, what do you want? So immediately I call the police. And I said, I need a police officer dispatched to my location. So Gary goes and opens the door and she's like, she's extremely intoxicated. She's like, um, I need you to come to my truck. And Gary says, why? I'm standing behind Gary. Gary has his hands on the, side, on the side of the door, I'm standing behind him, and she's like, well, I need to speak to you. I need you to come to my truck. So then Gary's like, well, what do you need? Then she calls me a drunk and just starts, like, talking crazy and calling me names and says I'm scary. And then we started arguing. I'm still in the back of Gary. So then she reaches under Gary and grabs my hair and pulls me into the hallway. And then that's when we start to fight. I have pictures of bruises, scratches, and everything from that night. I'd like to see them, please. I'd also like... Did the police ever respond? Yes, they I'd did. Like, I'd like to see the police report. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's also pictures in there of the bro broken window as well. well. I see the window. We haven't gotten to the window yet. Okay. Now, there are pictures here of a broken windshield. Yes. And the police report is clear that after the police came to discuss what happened to you, you were sort of reluctant to speak to them and a little, according to the report, a little intoxicated yourself. Yes. A sergeant also responded to the location, and it was the sergeant who observed the broken windshield on the car. When they identified the car as belonging to you, yes. they went back upstairs to speak to you. At that time, since you believed she had broken your windshield, then you said, well, that's enough. I want to press charges. So that's how we're here. Exactly. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That's what I get from reading this report. Okay. What time had you parked your car that evening? I would say about 6 p.m. Now, you told me before that you and Gary were living together at the time. Yes. That's not what it says in here. Yeah, Gary was living with me on and off around that time. Well, now we're getting... Now it is. So Gary was living with you on and off. Yes. Lisa, that would be you, right? Yes. Lisa said that Gary, her child's father, was only there to watch their child. Lisa and Gary were no longer in a dating relationship, nor was blank and blank. I assume her and somebody else said that even though that they had problems in the past, they had not seen or spoken to one another in quite some time. Lisa claimed to have no idea why the defendant and her friend arrived at the door. Now, you didn't tell me about a friend. I, I was getting to that part. 